Citizen science CS, also known as community science, crowd science, crowd-sourced science, civic science, volunteer monitoring, or online citizen science is scientific research conducted, in whole or in part, by amateur or non-professional scientists. Citizen science is sometimes described as, "...public participation in scientific research." participatory monitoring, and participatory action research whose outcomes are often advancements in scientific research, as well as an increase in the public's understanding of science. <laughs> <laughs> Definition The term CS has multiple origins, as well as differing concepts. It was first defined independently in the mid-1990s by Rick Bonney in the United States and Alan Irwin in the United Kingdom. Alan Irwin, a British sociologist, defines CS as, "...developing concepts of scientific citizenship which foregrounds the necessity of opening up science and science policy processes to the public." Irwin sought to reclaim two dimensions of the relationship between citizens and science, one that science should be responsive to citizens' concerns and needs, and two that citizens themselves could produce reliable scientific knowledge. The American ornithologist Rick Bonney, unaware of Irwin's work, defined CS as projects in which non-scientists, such as amateur birdwatchers, voluntarily contributed scientific data. This describes a more limited role for citizens in scientific research than Irwin's conception of the term. The terms citizen science and citizen scientists entered the Oxford English Dictionary (OED) in June 2014. Citizen science is defined as scientific work undertaken by members of the general public, often in collaboration with or under the direction of professional scientists and scientific institutions. Citizen scientist is defined as a, a scientist whose work is characterized by a sense of responsibility to serve the best interests of the wider community, now rare, or b, a member of the general public who engages in scientific work, often in collaboration with or under the direction of professional scientists and scientific institutions, an amateur scientist. The first use of the term Citizen scientist can be found in the magazine New Scientist in an article about ufology from October 1979. Mookie Hackley cites, from a policy report for the Wilson Center entitled, Citizen Science and Policy A European Perspective, an alternate first use of the term, Citizen Science, by R. Kersen in the magazine MIT Technology Review from January 1989. Quoting from the Wilson Center report, "...the new form of engagement in science received the name, citizen science. The first recorded example of the use of the term is from 1989, describing how 225 volunteers across the U.S. collected rain samples to assist the Audubon Society in an acid rain awareness raising campaign." A. Green Paper on Citizen Science was published in 2013 by the European Commission's Digital Science Unit and Societize.eu, which included a definition for CS, referring to, "...the general public engagement in scientific research activities when citizens actively contribute to science either with their intellectual effort or surrounding knowledge or with their tools and resources." Participants provide experimental data and facilities for researchers, raise new questions and co-create a new scientific culture." Citizen science may be performed by individuals, teams, or networks of volunteers. Citizen scientists often partner with professional scientists to achieve common goals. Large volunteer networks often allow scientists to accomplish tasks that would be too expensive or time consuming to accomplish through other means. Many citizen science projects serve education and outreach goals. These projects may be designed for a formal classroom environment or an informal education environment such as museums. Citizen science has evolved over the past four decades. Recent projects place more emphasis on scientifically sound practices and measurable goals for public education. 
Modern citizen science differs from its historical forms primarily in the access for, and subsequent scale of, public participation. Technology is credited as one of the main drivers of the recent explosion of citizen science activity. In March 2015, the Office of Science and Technology Policy published a fact sheet entitled Empowering Students and Others Through Citizen Science and Crowdsourcing. Quoting, citizen science and crowdsourcing projects are powerful tools for providing students with skills needed to excel in science, technology, engineering, and math STEM. Volunteers in citizen science, for example, gain hands-on experience doing real science, and in many cases take that learning outside of the traditional classroom setting. In May 2016, a new open access journal was started by the Citizen Science Association along with Ubiquity Press called Citizen Science, Theory and Practice CS, TMP. Quoting from the editorial article titled, The Theory and Practice of Citizen Science, Launching a New Journal, CS, TMP provides the space to enhance the quality and impact of citizen science efforts by deeply exploring the citizen science concept in all its forms and across disciplines. By examining, critiquing, and sharing findings across a variety of citizen science endeavors, we can dig into the underpinnings and assumptions of citizen science and critically analyze its practice and outcomes. Topic alternative definitions Other definitions for citizen science have also been proposed. For example, Bruce Lewinstein of Cornell University's Communication and SNTS departments describes three possible definitions, the participation of non-scientists in the process of gathering data according to specific scientific protocols and in the process of using and interpreting that data. The engagement of non-scientists in true decision-making about policy issues that have technical or scientific components. The engagement of research scientists in the democratic and policy process. Scientists and scholars who have used other definitions include Frank N. Von Hippel, Stephen Schneider, Neil Lane, and John Beckwith. Other alternative terminologies proposed are civic science and civic scientist. Further, Mookie Hackley offers an overview of the typologies of the level of citizen participation in citizen science, which range from crowdsourcing, level 1, where the citizen acts as a sensor, to distributed intelligence, level 2, where the citizen acts as a basic interpreter, to participatory science, where citizens contribute to problem definition and data collection, level 3, to extreme citizen science which involves collaboration between the citizen and scientists in problem definition, collection and data analysis. A 2014 Mashable article defines a citizen scientist as anybody who voluntarily contributes his or her time and resources towards scientific research in partnership with professional scientists. In 2016, the Australian Citizen Science Association released their definition which states, citizen science involves public participation and collaboration in scientific research with the aim to increase scientific knowledge. In 2016, the book Analyzing the Role of Citizen Science in Modern Research defined citizen science as work undertaken by civic educators together with citizen communities to advance science, foster a broad scientific mentality, and or encourage democratic engagement, which allows society to deal rationally with complex modern problems. Topic. Related fields In a smart city era, citizen science relays on various web-based tools e and becomes cyber-citizen science. Some projects, such as SETI at Home, use the Internet to take advantage of distributed computing. These projects are generally passive. Computation tasks are performed by volunteers' computers and require little involvement beyond initial setup. There is disagreement as to whether these projects should be classified as citizen science. The astrophysicist and Galaxy Zoo co-founder Kevin Sharwinsky stated, "...we prefer to call this Galaxy Zoo citizen science because it's a better description of what you're doing. You're a regular citizen but you're doing science. Crowd sourcing sounds a bit like, well, you're just a member of the crowd and you're not, you're our collaborator." You're proactively involved in the process of science by participating. Compared to SETI at home, Galaxy Zoo volunteers do real work. 
they're not just passively running something on their computer and hoping that they'll be the first person to find aliens. They have a stake in science that comes out of it, which means that they are now interested in what we do with it, and what we find." Citizen policy may be another result of citizen science initiatives. Bethany Brookshire pen name Sicurius writes, if citizens are going to live with the benefits or potential consequences of science as the vast majority of them will, it's incredibly important to make sure that they are not only well informed about changes and advances in science and technology, but that they also are able to influence the science policy decisions that could impact their lives. Topic. Benefits and limitations Citizen involvement in scientific projects has become a means of encouraging curiosity and greater understanding of science whilst providing an unprecedented engagement between professional scientists and the general public. In a research report published by the National Park Service in 2008, Brett Amy Thelen and Rachel K. Theot mentioned the following concerns, previously reported in the literature, about the validity of volunteer-generated data. Some projects may not be suitable for volunteers, for instance, when they use complex research methods or require a lot of, often repetitive, work. If volunteers lack proper training in research and monitoring protocols, they are at risk of introducing bias into the data. Members may lie about data. This risk is even greater when bounties are awarded as an incentive to participate. The question of data accuracy, in particular, remains open. John Luzzi, who created the Lost Ladybug Citizen Science Project, has argued that the cost effectiveness of citizen science data can outweigh data quality issues, if properly managed. In December 2016, authors M. Kosmala, A. Wiggins, A. Swanson, and B. Simmons published a study in the journal Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment called Assessing Data Quality in Citizen Science. The abstract describes how ecological and environmental CS projects have enormous potential to advance science. Also, CS projects can influence policy and guide resource management by producing datasets that are otherwise infeasible to generate. In the section, In a Nutshell, PG3, four condensed conclusions are stated. They are they conclude that as CS continues to grow and mature, a key metric of project success they expect to see will be a growing awareness of data quality. They also conclude that CS will emerge as a general tool helping to collect otherwise unobtainable high-quality data in support of policy and resource management, conservation monitoring, and basic science. A study of Canadian Lepidoptera datasets published in 2018 compared the use of a professionally curated dataset of butterfly specimen records with four years of data from a CS program, eButterfly. The eButterfly dataset was used as it was determined to be of high quality because of the expert vetting process used on the site, and there existed a historic dataset covering the same geographic area consisting of specimen data, much of it institutional. The authors note that, in this case, CS data provides both novel and complementary information to the specimen data. Five new species were reported from the CS data, and geographic distribution information was improved for over 80% of species in the combined dataset when CS data was included. Topic. Law in March 2015, the state of Wyoming passed new laws Senate Files 12 and 80 clarifying that trespassing laws applied even if the trespasser's intention was to gather data to further a U.S. government science program. This hampered some CS researchers who were collecting data while on other people's land. Topic ethics Various studies have been published that explore the ethics of CS, including issues such as intellectual property and project design, e.g., the Citizen Science Association CSA, based at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and the European Citizen Science Association ECSA, based in the Museum für Naturkunde in Berlin, have working groups on ethics and principles. In September 2015, the European Citizen Science Association ECSA published its 10 principles 
principles of citizen science, which have been developed by the Sharing Best Practice and Building Capacity Working Group of the ECSA, led by the Natural History Museum, London with input from many members of the association. The medical ethics of Internet crowdsourcing has been questioned by Graeber and Graeber in the Journal of Medical Ethics. In particular, they analyze the effect of games and the crowdsourcing project folded. They conclude, games can have possible adverse effects, and that they manipulate the user into participation. In March 2019 the online journal Citizen Science, Theory and Practice launched a collection of articles on the theme of ethical issues in citizen science. The articles are introduced with quoting, Citizen science can challenge existing ethical norms because it falls outside of customary methods of ensuring that research is conducted ethically. What ethical issues arise when engaging the public in research? How have these issues been addressed, and how should they be addressed in the future? Topic. Economic worth In the research paper, Can Citizen Science Enhance Public Understanding of Science? by Bonnie et al. 2016, statistics which analyze the economic worth of citizen science are used, drawn from two papers, I. Salman and Friends only 2015, and I. Theobald et al. 2015. In Crowd Science User Contribution Patterns and Their Implications. By Salomon and Friends only, 2015. Seven projects from the Zooniverse web portal are used to estimate the monetary value of the CS that had taken place. The seven projects are Solar Storm Watch, Galaxy Zoo Supernovae, Galaxy Zoo Hubble, Moon Zoo, Old Weather, the Milky Way Project, and Planet Hunters. Using data from 180 days in 2010, they find a total of 100,386 users participated, contributing 129,540 hours of unpaid work. Estimating at a rate of $12 an hour, an undergraduate research assistant's basic wage, the total contributions amount to $1,554,474, an average of $222,068 per project. It should be noted that the range over the seven projects was from $22,717 to $654,130, in Global change and local solutions, tapping the unrealized potential of citizen science for biodiversity research. By Theobald et al., 2015, the authors surveyed 388 unique biodiversity based projects. Quoting, We estimate that between 1.36 million and 2.28 million people volunteer annually in the 388 projects we surveyed, though variation is great. And that, the range of in kind contribution of the volunteerism in our 388 citizen science projects is between $667 million to $2.5 billion annually. Worldwide participation in citizen science continues to grow. A list of the top five citizen science communities compiled by Mark Kuchner and Kristen Erickson in July 2018 shows a total of 3.75 million participants, although there is likely substantial overlap between the communities. <laughs> Education There have been studies published which examine the place of CS within education, e.g., teaching aids can include books and activity or lesson plans, e.g. Some examples of studies are From the Second International Handbook of Science Education, a chapter entitled, "'Citizen Science, Ecojustice, and Science Education, Rethinking an Education from Nowhere' by Mueller and Tippins 2011, acknowledges in the abstract that there is an emerging emphasis in science education on engaging youth in citizen science." The authors also ask, "...whether citizen science goes further with respect to citizen development." The abstract ends by stating that the "...chapter takes account of the ways educators will collaborate with members of the community to effectively guide decisions, which offers promise for sharing a responsibility for democratizing science with others." 
from the journal Democracy and Education, an article entitled, "'Lessons Learned from Citizen Science in the Classroom' by authors Gray, Nicosia and Jordan GNJ 2012 give a response to a study by Mueller, Tippins and Bryan MTB called, "'The Future of Citizen Science' GNJ begins by stating in the abstract that the study The Future of Citizen Science, provides an important theoretical perspective about the future of democratized science and K-12 education. Quote, but GRB state. However, the authors MTB fail to adequately address the existing barriers and constraints to moving community-based science into the classroom. Quote, they end the abstract by arguing that the resource constraints of scientists, teachers, and students likely pose problems to moving true democratized science into the classroom. In 2014, a study was published called, Citizen Science and Lifelong Learning, by R. Edwards in the journal Studies in the Education of Adults. Edwards begins by writing in the abstract that CS projects have expanded over recent years and engaged CSs and professionals in diverse ways. He continues, yet there has been little educational exploration of such projects to date. Quote, he describes that, there has been limited exploration of the educational backgrounds of adult contributors to citizen science. Quote, dot. Edwards explains that CS contributors are referred to as volunteers, citizens or as amateurs. He ends the abstract. The article will explore the nature and significance of these different characterizations and also suggest possibilities for further research. In the journal Microbiology and Biology Education a study was published by Shah and Martinez 2015 called Current Approaches in Implementing Citizen Science in the Classroom they begin by writing in the abstract that CS is a partnership between inexperienced amateurs and trained scientists. The authors continue, "...with recent studies showing a weakening in scientific competency of American students, incorporating citizen science initiatives in the curriculum provides a means to address deficiencies." They argue that combining traditional and innovative methods can help provide a practical experience of science. The abstract ends. Citizen science can be used to emphasize the recognition and use of systematic approaches to solve problems affecting the community. In November 2017, authors Mitchell, Triska and Liberatori published a study in Public Library of Science titled, Benefits and Challenges of Incorporating Citizen Science into University Education. The authors begin by stating in the abstract that CSs contribute data with the expectation that it will be used. It reports that CS has been used for first-year university students as a means to experience research. They continue. Surveys of more than 1,500 students showed that their environmental engagement increased significantly after participating in data collection and data analysis. However, only a third of students agreed that data collected by CSs was reliable. A positive outcome of this was that the students were more careful of their own research. The abstract ends, if true for citizen scientists in general, enabling participants as well as scientists to analyze data could enhance data quality, and so address a key constraint of broad-scale citizen science programs. History "'Citizen science' is a fairly new term but an old practice. Prior to the 20th century, science was often the pursuit of gentlemen scientists, amateur or self-funded researchers such as Sir Isaac Newton, Benjamin Franklin, and Charles Darwin. By the mid-20th century, however, science was dominated by researchers employed by universities and government research laboratories. By the 1970s, this transformation was being called into question. Philosopher Paul Feyerabend called for a «democratization of science». Biochemist Erwin Chargaff advocated a return to science by nature-loving amateurs in the tradition of Descartes, Newton, Leibniz, Buffon, and Darwin—science dominated by «amateurship instead of money-biased technical bureaucrats». 
A study from 2016 indicates that the largest impact of citizen science is in research on biology, conservation and ecology, and is utilized mainly as a methodology of collecting and classifying data. <laughs> Amateur astronomy Astronomy has long been a field where amateurs have contributed throughout time, all the way up to the present day. Collectively, amateur astronomers observe a variety of celestial objects and phenomena sometimes with equipment that they build themselves. Common targets of amateur astronomers include the Moon, planets, stars, comets, meteor showers, and a variety of deep sky objects such as star clusters, galaxies, and nebulae. Observations of comets and stars are also used to measure the local level of artificial skyglow. One branch of amateur astronomy, amateur astrophotography, involves the taking of photos of the night sky. Many amateurs like to specialize in the observation of particular objects, types of objects, or types of events that interest them. The American Association of Variable Star Observers has gathered data on variable stars for educational and professional analysis since 1911 and promotes participation beyond its membership on its Citizen Sky website. Topic: <laughs> Butterfly counts. Butterfly counts have a long tradition of involving individuals in the study of butterflies' range and their relative abundance. Two long-running programs are the UK Butterfly Monitoring Scheme started in 1976 and the North American Butterfly Association's Butterfly Count Program started in 1975. There are various protocols for monitoring butterflies and different organizations support one or more of transects, counts and or opportunistic sightings. E-Butterfly is an example of a program designed to capture any of the three types of counts for observers in North America. Species-specific programs also exist, with monarchs the prominent example. Two examples of this involve the counting of monarch butterflies during the fall migration to overwintering sites in Mexico. One, Monarch Watch is a continent-wide project, while two, the Cape May Monarch Monitoring Project is an example of a local project. The Austrian project Phil Falter investigated if and how trained and supervised pupils are able to systematically collect data about the occurrence of diurnal butterflies, and how this data could contribute to a permanent butterfly monitoring system. Despite substantial identification uncertainties for some species or species groups, the data collected by pupils was successfully used to predict the general habitat quality for butterflies. Ornithology Citizen science projects have become increasingly focused on providing benefits to scientific research. The North American Bird Phenology Program, historically called the Bird Migration and Distribution Records, may have been the earliest collective effort of citizens collecting ornithological information in the U.S. The program, dating back to 1883, was started by Wells Woodbridge Cook. Cook established a network of observers around North America to collect bird migration records. The Audubon Society's Christmas Bird Count, which began in 1900, is another example of a long-standing tradition of citizen science which has persisted to the present day. Citizen scientists help gather data that will be analyzed by professional researchers, and can be used to produce bird population and biodiversity indicators. Raptor migration research relies on the data collected by the hawkwatching community. This mostly volunteer group counts migrating exhibitors, buteos, falcons, harriers, kites, eagles, osprey, vultures and other raptors at hawk sites throughout North America during the spring and fall seasons. The daily data is uploaded to hawkcount.org where it can be viewed by professional scientists and the public. Such indices can be useful tools to inform management, resource allocation, policy and planning. For example, European Breeding Bird Survey data provide input for the Farmland Bird Index, adopted by the European Union as a structural indicator of sustainable development. This provides a cost-effective alternative to government monitoring. 
Similarly, data collected by citizen scientists as part of BirdLife Australia's has been analysed to produce the first ever Australian terrestrial bird indices. Topic: <laughs> Citizen Oceanography. The concept of citizen science has been extended to the ocean environment for characterising ocean dynamics and tracking marine debris. For example, the mobile app Marine Debris Tracker is a joint partnership of National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Georgia. Long-term sampling efforts such as the Continuous Plankton Recorder has been fitted on ships of opportunity since 1931. Plankton collection by sailors and subsequent genetic analysis was pioneered in 2013 by Indigo V Expeditions as a way to better understand marine microbial structure and function. Topic: <laughs> Citizen study of coral reefs. Citizen science has recently developed in coral reef studies. Underwater photography has become more and more popular since the early 2000s, resulting on millions of pictures posted every year on various websites and social media. This mass of documentation is endowed with an enormous scientific potential, as millions of tourists possess a much superior coverage power than professional scientists, who can not allow themselves to spend so much time in the field. As a consequence, several participative sciences programs have been developed, supported by geolocalization and identification websites such as inaturalist.org. Another example, the Monitoring Through Many Eyes project collates thousands of underwater images of the Great Barrier Reef and provides an interface for elicitation of reef health indicators. Additionally, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration offers opportunities for volunteer participation. By taking measurements in the United States National Marine Sanctuaries, citizens are able to contribute data to a variety of marine biology projects. By enabling these citizens, NOAA benefited from 137,000 hours of research during 2016. There also exist protocols for auto organization and self teaching aimed at biodiversity interest of snorkelers, in order for them to turn their observations into sound scientific data, available for research. This kind of approach has been successfully used in Reunion Island, allowing for tens of new records and even new species. Art history Citizen science has a long tradition in natural science. But nowadays, citizen science projects can also be found in various fields of science like art history. For example, the Zooniverse project Annotate is a transcription tool developed to enable volunteers to read and transcribe the personal papers of British-born and émigré artists. The papers are drawn from the Tate Archive. Another example of citizen science in art history is Artigo. Artigo collects semantic data on artworks from the footprints left by players of games featuring artwork images. From these footprints, Artigo automatically builds a semantic search engine for artworks. Topic: <laughs> Modern technology. Newer technologies have increased the options for citizen science. Citizen scientists can build and operate their own instruments to gather data for their own experiments or as part of a larger project. Examples include amateur radio, amateur astronomy, Six Sigma projects, and maker activities. Most recently scientist Joshua Pierce has advocated for the creation of open-source hardware-based scientific equipment that boasts citizen scientists and professional scientists, which can be replicated by digital manufacturing techniques such as 3D printing. Multiple studies have shown this approach radically reduces scientific equipment costs. Examples of this approach include water testing, nitrate and other environmental testing, basic biology and optics. Groups such as Public Lab, which is a community where citizen scientists can learn how to investigate environmental concerns using inexpensive DIY techniques, embody this approach. Video technology has enabled expanded citizen science. 
The Citizen Science Center in the Nature Research Center wing of the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences has exhibits on how to get involved in scientific research and become a citizen scientist. For example, visitors can observe bird feeders at the Prairie Ridge Ecostation Satellite Facility via live video feed and record which species they see. Since 2005, the Genographic Project has used the latest genetic technology to expand our knowledge of the human story, and its pioneering use of DNA testing to engage and involve the public in the research effort has helped to create a new breed of citizen scientist. Geno 2.0 expands the scope for citizen science, harnessing the power of the crowd to discover new details of human population history. This includes supporting, organization and dissemination of personal DNA, genetic, testing. Like amateur astronomy, citizen scientists encouraged by volunteer organizations like the International Society of Genetic Genealogy have provided valuable information and research to the professional scientific community. With unmanned aerial vehicles, further citizen science is enabled. One example is the ESA's AstroDrone smartphone app for gathering robotic data with the Parrot R drone. Citizens in Space CIS, a project of the United States Rocket Academy, seeks to combine citizen science with citizen space exploration. CIS is training citizen astronauts to fly as payload operators on suborbital reusable spacecraft that are now in development. CIS will also be developing, and encouraging others to develop, citizen science payloads to fly on suborbital vehicles. CIS has already acquired a contract for 10 flights on the Lynx suborbital vehicle, being developed by XCOR Aerospace, and plans to acquire additional flights on XCOR Lynx and other suborbital vehicles in the future. CIS believes that the development of low cost reusable suborbital spacecraft will be the next great enabler, allowing citizens to participate in space exploration and space science. Topic. Internet The Internet has been a boon to citizen science, particularly through gamification. One of the first Internet-based citizen science experiments was NASA's ClickWorkers, which enabled the general public to assist in the classification of images, greatly reducing the time to analyze large data sets. Another was the Citizen Science Toolbox, launched in 2003, at the Australian Coastal Collaborative Research Centre. Mozak is a game in which players create 3D reconstructions from images of actual human and mouse neurons, helping to advance understanding of the brain. One of the largest citizen science games is iWire, a brain mapping puzzle game developed at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology that now has over 200,000 players. Another example is Quantum Moves, a game developed by the Center for Driven Community Research at Aarhus University, which uses online community efforts to solve quantum physics problems. The solutions found by players can then be used in the lab to feed computational algorithms used in building a scalable quantum computer. More generally, Amazon's Mechanical Turk is frequently used in the creation, collection, and processing of data by paid citizens. There is controversy as to whether or not the data collected through such services is reliable, as it is subject to participants' desire for compensation. However, use of Mechanical Turk tends to quickly produce more diverse participant backgrounds, as well as comparably accurate data when compared to traditional collection methods. The Internet has also enabled citizen scientists to gather data to be analyzed by professional researchers. Citizen science networks are often involved in the observation of cyclic events of nature, phenology, such as effects of global warming on plant and animal life in different geographic areas, and in monitoring programs for natural resource management. On Bugide, Net, an online community of naturalists who share observations of arthropod, amateurs and professional researchers contribute to the analysis. By October 2014, Bugide has over 808,718 images submitted by more than 27,846 contributors. The Zooniverse is home to the Internet's largest, most popular and most successful citizen science projects. The Zooniverse and the suite of projects it contains is produced, maintained and developed by the Citizen Science Alliance CSA. 
The member institutions of the CSA work with many academic and other partners around the world to produce projects that use the efforts and ability of volunteers to help scientists and researchers deal with the flood of data that confronts them. On June 29, 2015, the Zooniverse released a new software version with a project building tool allowing any registered user to create a project. Project owners may optionally complete an approval process to have their projects listed on the Zooniverse site and promoted to the Zooniverse community. A NASA, JPL picture to the right gives an example from one of Zooniverse's projects the Milky Way project. The website CosmoQuest has as its goal, to create a community of people bent on together advancing our understanding of the universe, a community of people who are participating in doing science, who can explain why what they do matters, and what questions they are helping to answer. Crowdcrafting enables its participants to create and run projects where volunteers help with image classification, transcription, geocoding and more. The platform is powered by PyBossa Software, a free and open source framework for crowdsourcing. Project Sooth is a citizen science research project based at the University of Edinburgh. The aim of this research is to create a bank of soothing images, submitted by members of the public, which can be used to help others through psychotherapy and research in the future. Since 2015, Project Sooth has received over 600 soothing photographs from people in 23 countries. Anyone aged 12 years or over are eligible to participate in this research in two ways, one, by submitting soothing photos that they have taken with a description of why the images make them feel soothed, two, by rating the photos that have been submitted by people worldwide for their soothability. Topic smartphone bandwidth The bandwidth and ubiquity afforded by smartphone technology has vastly expanded the opportunities for citizen science. Examples include Innaturalist, the San Francisco Project, the Wild Lab, Project NOAA, and Aurorosaurus. Due to their ubiquity, for example, Twitter, Facebook, and smartphones have been useful for citizen scientists, having enabled them to discover and propagate a new type of aurora dubbed STI. In 2016, there are also smartphone apps for monitoring birds, marine wildlife, and other organisms, and the loss of the night. An Android app, Sapelli, is a mobile data collection and sharing platform designed with a particular focus on non literate and illiterate users with little or no prior ICT experience. Experience. A smartphone-focused platform for citizen science applications is SPOTTERON, which creates synergy effects for projects by sharing a common feature set. The Crowd and the Cloud is a four-part series broadcast during April 2017, which examines citizen science. It shows how smartphones, computers and mobile technology enable regular citizens to become part of a 21st-century way of doing science. The programs also demonstrate how CSs help professional scientists to advance knowledge, which helps speed up new discoveries and innovations. The Crowd and the Cloud is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation. Topic. Seismology Since 1975, in order to improve earthquake detection and collect useful information, the European Mediterranean Seismological Center monitors the visits of earthquake eyewitnesses to its website and relies on Facebook and Twitter. Hydrology <inaudible> 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 Citizen science has been used to provide valuable data in hydrology catchment science, notably flood risk, water quality and water resource management. A growth in Internet use and smartphone ownership has allowed users to collect and share real-time flood risk information using, for example, social media and web-based forms. Although traditional data collection methods are well established, citizen science is being used to fill the data gaps on a local level, and is therefore meaningful to individual communities. It has been demonstrated that citizen science is particularly advantageous during a flash flood because the public are more likely to witness these rarer hydrological events than scientists. Topic Africa and South America There are many CS projects in Africa and South America. 
Some examples in Africa are, in South Africa, SA, CS projects include, the Stream Assessment Scoring System Minisas, which encourages enhanced catchment management for water security in a climate-stressed society, also in SA, members of the public, or, citizen scientists, are helping researchers from the University of Pretoria to identify Phytophthora species present in the Finbos. In June 2016, citizen science experts from across East Africa gathered in Nairobi, Kenya for a symposium organized by the Tropical Biology Association TBA, in partnership with the Center for Ecology and Hydrology CHE. The aim was, to harness the growing interest and expertise in East Africa to stimulate new ideas and collaborations in citizen science, Rosie Trevelyan of the TBA said, we need to enhance our knowledge about the status of Africa's species and the threats facing them. And scientists can't do it all on their own. At the same time, citizen science is an extremely effective way of connecting people more closely to nature and enrolling more people in conservation action. The website Zooniverse hosts several African CS projects, including, Snapshot Serengeti, Wildcam Garongoza and Jungle Rhythms. Nigeria has the Abadan Bird Club whose to aim is to, exchange ideas and share knowledge about birds, and get actively involved in the conservation of birds and biodiversity. In Namibia, GiraffeSpotter.org is a project that will provide people with an online citizen science platform for giraffes. Within the Republic of the Congo, the territories of an indigenous people have been mapped so that the Menjel tribe can protect treasured trees from being cut down by logging companies. An Android open source app called Sapeli was used by the Menjel, which helped them map their tribal lands and highlighted trees that were important to them, usually for medicinal reasons or religious significance. Congolese Industrial Des Bois then verified the trees that the tribe documented as valuable and removed them from its cutting schedule. The tribe also documented illegal logging and poaching activities. In West Africa, the eradication of the recent outbreak of Ebola virus disease was partly helped by CS. Communities learned how to assess the risks posed by the disease independently of prior cultural assumptions, and local empiricism allowed cultural rules to be reviewed, suspended, or changed as epidemiological facts emerged. Citizen science is alive and well in all three Ebola affected countries. And if only a fraction of the international aid directed at rebuilding health systems were to be redirected towards support for citizen science, that might be a fitting memorial to those who died in the epidemic. CS projects in South America include, in 2015, the Ashaninka people from Abiutxa, which crosses the border between Brazil and Peru, began using the Android app Sapelli to monitor their land. The Ashaninka have faced historical pressures of disease, exploitation and displacement, and today still face the illegal invasion of their lands by loggers and hunters. This monitoring project shows how the Apiotia Ashaninka from the Campo do Rio Amonia Indigenous Territory, Brazil, are beginning to use smartphones and technological tools to monitor these illegal activities more effectively. In Argentina, two smartphone Android applications are available for CS. I. A peer has been developed at the Institute of Limnology and was launched in May 2016. Joaquin Coachman is a researcher who developed an application that appeals to the collaboration of users of mobile devices in collecting data that allow the study of aquatic ecosystems. Translation. Coachman stated. Not much of citizen science in Argentina, just a few more oriented to astronomy-specific cases. As ours is the first. And I have volunteers from different parts of the country that are interested in joining together to centralize data. That's great because these types of things require many people participate actively and voluntarily. Translation, II Airbird was launched in 2013, and has so far identified 965 species of birds. Airbird in Argentina is, "...developed and managed by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology at Cornell University, one of the most important ornithological institutions in the world, and locally presented recently with the support of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Productive Innovation of the Nation Translation 
Projects in Brazil include, I, Platform and Mobile App, Missions, has been developed by IBM in their Sao Paulo Research Lab with Brazil's Ministry for Environment and Innovation, BMEI. Sergio Borga, an IBM team led in Sao Paulo, devised the crowdsourced approach when BMEI approached the company in 2010. They were looking for a way to create a central repository for the rainforest data. Users can upload photos of a plant species and its components, enter its characteristics, such as color and size, compare it against a catalog photo and classify it. The classification results are juried by crowdsourced ratings. II Exos Citizen Science is a member of Astronomers Without Borders and seeks to explore the southern sky for new medias and radiance. Users can report media fireballs through uploading pictures onto a web page or by linking to YouTube. III The Information System on Brazilian Biodiversity SIBBR, was launched in 2014, aiming to encourage and facilitate the publication, integration, access and use of information about the biodiversity of the country. Their initial goal was to gather 2.5 million occurrence records of species from biological collections in Brazil and abroad up to the end of 2016. It is now expected that SIBBR reach 9 million of records in 2016." Andrea Portela said, "...in 2016, we will begin with the citizen science." They are tools that enable anyone, without any technical knowledge, to participate. With this we will achieve greater engagement with society. People will be able to have more interaction with the platform, contribute and comment on what Brazil has, IV. The Brazilian Marine Megafauna Project Initiativa Pro Mar is working with the European CSA towards its main goal, which is the sensibilization of society for marine life issues and concerns about pollution and the over-exploitation of natural resources. Having started as a project monitoring manta ray, it now extends to whale shark and educating schools and divers within the Santos area. Its social media activities include a live streaming of a CS course to help divers identify marine megafauna. V. A smartphone app called Plantix has been developed by the Leibniz Center for Agricultural Landscape Research, ZALF, which helps Brazilian farmers discover crop diseases quicker and helps fight them more efficiently. Brazil is a very large agricultural exporter, but between 10 to 30 percent of crops fail because of disease. The database currently includes 175 frequently occurring crop diseases and pests, as well as 40,000 photos. The identification algorithm of the app improves with every image, which records a success rate of over 90 percent, as of approximately 500 photos per crop disease. BI, in an Atlantic Ocean forest region in Brazil, an effort to map the genetic riches of soil is underway. The Drugs from Dirt initiative, based at the Rockefeller University, seeks to turn up bacteria that yield new types of antibiotics the Brazilian region being particularly rich in potentially useful bacterial genes. Approximately a quarter of the 185 soil samples have been taken by citizen scientists without which the project could not run. In Chile CS projects include, some websites in Spanish, I testing new cancer therapies with scientists from the Science Foundation for Life, II monitoring the population of the Chilean bumblebee, III monitoring the invasive ladybird Chinita Arlequin. IV collecting rainwater data. V monitoring various pollinating fly populations. VI providing information and field data on the abundance and distribution of various species of rockfish. Projects in Colombia include, some websites in Spanish, I. The communications project of the Humboldt Institute along with the Organization for Education and Environmental Protection initiated projects in the Bogotá wetlands of Córdoba and El Burro, which have a lot of biodiversity, I. In the model forest of Risaralda, the Colombia Proyecto de Ciencia Abierta y Colaborativa promotes citizen participation in research related to the local environment is adapting to climate change. The first meeting took place in the Flora and Fauna Sanctuary Odin Quimbaya, III. 
The Citizen Network Environmental Monitoring Cluster, based in the city of Bukaramanga, seeks to engage younger students in data science, who are trained in building weather stations with open repositories based on free software and open hardware data. IB. The Symposium on Biodiversity has adapted the CS tool eNaturalist for use in Colombia. B. The Sinchi Amazonic Institute of Scientific Research seeks to encourage the development and diffusion of knowledge, values, and technologies on the management of natural resources for ethnic groups in the Amazon. This research should further the use of participatory action research schemes and promoting participation communities. Since 2010, the Pacific Biodiversity Institute PBI seeks volunteers to help identify, describe and protect wildland complexes and roadless areas in South America. The PBI are engaged in an ambitious project with our Latin American conservation partners to map all the wildlands in South America, to evaluate their contribution to global biodiversity and to share and disseminate this information. Conferences The first conference on public participation in scientific research was held in Portland, Oregon in August 2012. Citizen science is now often a theme at large conferences, such as the annual meeting of the American Geophysical Union. In 2010, 2012, and 2014, there were three Citizen Cyberscience Summits, organized by the Citizen Cyberscience Center in Geneva. The 2014 summit was hosted in London and attracted over 300 participants. In January 2015, the ETH Zurich and University of Zurich hosted an international meeting on the challenges and opportunities in citizen science. The first citizen science conference hosted by the Citizen Science Association was in San Jose, California, in February 2015 in partnership with the AAAS conference. The Citizen Science Association Conference, SICI 2017, was held in St. Paul, Minnesota, United States, between May 17 and 20, 2017. The conference had more than 600 attendees. The next SICI is in March 2019 in Raleigh, USA. The platform, Osterich Forscht, hosts the annual Austrian Citizen Science Conference since 2015. Topic. National and regional portals See also <laughs>